there, welcome back, and I'm really happy that you're joining us here. Let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, kids. And my next guest is a psychotherapist and the executive director and founder of the Celia Center in Los Angeles. Her desire to become a therapist with a special focus on adopted and foster care issues is quite personal. It comes from her own experience of being adopted and moving through the foster care system. Let's bring her in right now, Dr. Jeanette Yaffe. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here with you today, Ernie. Well, so nice to have you here today, Doctor. You are just bursting right off the screen with that wonderful, amazing smile. I know you're a therapist and office there looks beautiful and that really is important, right? To make all of the kids that you have there just feel comfortable. And I'm assuming that the more comfortable that they are, the more progress you can make, right? Sure. Oh, yes. Well, I'm a psychotherapist and I want to create an environment that's inviting uh, so kids feel emotionally safe because I'm a therapist and we're going to be talking about some vulnerable topics together. Now, I know that you have written a couple of books on this very important subject, correct? And you can yes. also hold those up if you have them because they're oh. your beautiful, Jeanette. Yeah, I yes. love them. They're just great success stories helping so many children. I know you've spoken oh. about this publicly. It's very personal, isn't it, for you? It means a lot. Yes, I was raised in the New York State foster care system. I was in the system for six and a half years and then I was adopted into another home when I was seven and a half. Oh. So I know this experience inside and out. And that's why what inspired me to become a psychotherapist competent in foster care and adoption. Well, you're doing a great job and you're clearly having a positive impact on so many children facing the issues that you face. So tell us how important it is because of the work you do to learn and have kids share love and being good role models that's proving to be very effective and very resilient. Of too. course. And we are resilient. We just need people around us supporting us and understanding our vulnerabilities because we will have them and our strengths Right. because we can get through this, but we need the right support. So I teach parents that kids who've been in foster care and or adoption need a different right. approach to parenting. They can't be parented like children who have not been adopted or placed in multiple foster homes. They need a different approach. Uh, and that's attachment yeah. parenting and trauma-informed parenting. Because typically the reason why children enter the foster care system is because of abuse and neglect by their caregiver. Mm -hmm. So the attachment is crucial for the parent to understand the impact of their relationship with the child. So it's inspiring work and um, when it's done sure. well and parents understand these pieces, uh, sure. children do feel more secure and they're able to develop and make a difference like I'm doing in the world had I not yes. had my foster and adoptive family. And you know, you talk a lot about adoption. We do hear a lot of more activity with people who are adopting children of within their own family. They have children of their own and then they adopt two or three others, making it just a real loving environment. Isn't that a nice new trend that we're seeing here? Wonderful stuff. Oh yes, because there's a minimum of 407,000 children to 422,000 children in the foster care system today. So we do need more foster yep. adoptive parents willing to step up and go, you know what? I do have the financial means and yep. the ability to raise more children. Of course, I want to give back to society and help a child have a better mm -hmm. life and give them a second chance. So it's very important that parents consider even though they have biological children, consider right. taking in and adopting a child who's been in foster care. The things we Definitely. like to do on our program is to help people beyond our interview. You've given us great information today. If people want more, how can they get involved? What can they do? What suggestions do you have for them? Tell us more about that. Well, they can become a foster parent by contacting their local Department of Children and Family Services Good. and go through their certification process. Becoming a foster parent, you can also be a respite parent. You can be an emergency placement parent so that when a child enters the foster care system, they have a place to go and stay, whether, whether it's a minimum of one month to three mm -hmm. months, yep. while the social worker is looking for a more permanent home for that child. Because we need, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And also you can become a respite caregiver for a foster parent. Foster parents are overwhelmed, they need support, mm -hmm. they need oh, respite. Yeah. Uh, because parenting a child who's been through a traumatic experience can be very taxing 
from yeah. the parent. So. Yeah. Yeah, we do understand that, and we thank you for all you do, okay? It was a real pleasure speaking with you today, Dr. Yaffe. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you take for good care. me. All right, take good care. Finally, let's just talk for a minute. Did you know that children smile or laugh about 300 times a day? If you're around kids, you know that that's true. But what about us adults? No surprise, grown or smile or laugh maybe 15 or 20 times a day. That's not much. Of course, we know that adults have more responsibilities and some serious issues to deal with, but we still need to take time to smile, relax, laugh a little bit more. I try to remember that every day and it really makes a difference. Now it's true what they say, that laughter is the best medicine. It draws people together in ways to trigger healthy physical and emotional changes in the body. Laughter, it strengthens your immune system. It can boost your mood. It can ease pain and the damaging effects of stress. Now, researchers tell us that nothing works faster to bring your mind and your body back into balance than a good laugh. Now, personally, I look for ways to chill and not take everything so seriously. Come on, I want you to lighten up. Lighten up your burdens, laugh a little bit more, live healthier. I want you to give it a try and let me know if it works for you. I've been doing it for a long time. If you smile, it's that reaction within your body that really makes you feel good and it shares the love everywhere. Thanks for watching us on Positively America. I'm Ernie Anastas, and we'll see you next time, right here.